and take a look at a legal problem called Sudoku Solver. So basically we're writing a program to solve a Sudoku puzzle by filling the empty cells, right? So we're given a uh, character 2D array or grid or a board. And basically for each and every single cell, uh, it is between the digit one to nine and it must occur once in each row, once in each column, and once in each sub box or sub grid, right? So the sub grid is, you can see this is a sub grid. Um, and also you can see this is also a sub grid right here. This is a sub grid. And these are also sub grids, right? So sub grid is basically three by three, right? And then also you can see here, we have nine sub grids and dot in this case, a, uh, a decimal uh, character it represents the empty cell, right? So if we found an empty cell, we must have to fill this empty cell with the correct digits. It's either between one to nine, it, uh, and this digit must occur once in the in this current row, and the current column, and the current box, right? So how can we solve this problem? Well, let's take a look at an example here. So you can see we have an example one, right? So we have example one, and dot represents the empty cell. We want to fill this empty cell with a correct digit. So at the end, you can see we have a correct digit like this, right? And then after we fill the board, it looks something like this. And the constraint is that the length of the board is nine by nine. And uh, for each and every single element is either a digit or a dot, right? So it's guaranteed that the input board has only one solution. So for each and every Sudoku uh, board, it must have only exactly one solution. So it cannot have two or more than two, right? So in this case, uh, if you look at the answer board, if you look at four, four is valid because in this case, the entire row, right? Sorry, the entire uh, column has no four, right? There's no four at this column. And there's also no four at this row, and there's also no four at this subgrid as well. So in this case, this is the valid position. And same thing, you have to do that for each and every single cell that are empty, right? So in this case, if I have an empty cell here, uh, I also have to do the same for the entire row, the entire column, and the entire sub box right here, right? So there's no six on the row, no six on the entire column, and no six in the entire grid. So we can safely to put that number in there. So how can we solve this problem? So we can solve this problem using backtracking because in this case, for each and every single cell, right, that we're going to fill in, if there's an empty cell that we have to fill in, uh, we have to um, fill in the correct number or a correct digit. If the current correct digit is not right, we have to backtrack to the original, uh, the previous, or I should say the, the, the previous stack to try with another option, right? Because for each and every single cell, we can have one, we can have two, we can have all the way to nine. We have so many options, right? And for each and every of those options, like one to nine, we have to plug it in to try, right? So if I have a box right here, like for example, this one. So if I have a box like this, right? So in this case, for each cell, I have so many options, I have one to nine, right? For the beginning, like, I can have one here, right? And because there's no ones in this column, there's no ones in the row, I can have one. And then for a second cell, I can start with two, right? In this case, I can have a two here, right? Because there's no two in the row and the column and the sub box as well. So for the next cell, what I can do is I can fill a three, but three is already here, right? So then I iterate the next elements four. Four in this case is not there, so we can add four here, right? So there's no four in the sub box, no four at the current row and no four at the column. So then for this element, I can add five, but five is already here. In this case, I can add six, but the six is already in the sub box. And I can add seven, but seven is already at this row. So I can add eight. In this case, eight is not at this row, uh, not at this row and not at this column and not at the sub box, right? So then what we're gonna do is we also uh, try with this element in this case we can add nine right so once we add nine you can see there there's no more option that we can add because we cannot because the number that we're missing here is six for this entire row right so in this case but six you can see six is right here so we can't really add six here right so it doesn't really make sense 
So what we had to do is we have to backtrack to the previous stack, in this case is nine. And then what we had to do is we have to to uh, iterate the remaining options, right? Because we already go from one to nine already, nine is the last option that we have. So in this case, nine doesn't have any more options. So we're gonna return false. That means that this cell is not at the correct position. So we have to keep backtracking to its parent's cell, in this case, eight. Eight, then we put a nine here. In this case, can we put a nine here? Yes, we can, right? So then we have to move into next cell. In this case, we can't put a three, we can put a we can't put a one, two, or three, or four, or five. We can't put a six, we can't put a seven, we can only put an eight, but eight is already here. So you can see this is a wrong answer, right? So you can see we have to go back. And then in this case, we have to go back to the parent root. So it used to be four, now we have to go five. Five is already there, let's try six. Well, six, let's see, six is not there, so let's try six here, right? In this case, there's no six. And then what we had to do now is we can um, like add another value, right? In this case, we can add one is here, two is here, three is here. How about let's try four? In this case, four is not here at this current column, not at this row and not at the subgrid, so we can add four here. Let's try five. In this case, five is already there, six is already there, seven is already there, eight is already here. So let's try nine. So in this case, nine is can be here because it's not at this column, not at this row, and not at the uh, not at the subbox, right? So we can also add eight here, right? Because eight is not there, and eight is not here as well, and eight is not at the subbox, right? So then what we have to do is we can move on to the next like nest row right or the net yeah the nest row and try to fill those numbers i actually uh have a visual studio code and basically does exactly that so you can see that i first i make a choice right so in this case i make a decision in this case i start with one then i for the nest cell i make another decision right and then another decision here and then eventually you can see i have six six is the only option but six is already at this row so it's not Good. So we unchoose that decision, right? And then we keep backtracking back to the to the four. In this case, uh, then we have six. Then in this case, we have four, nine, and eight, just like what we have. And then we move on to the next row, right? So in this case, for the next row, we make a decision. In this case, we can only have. You can see here, we only can have two, right? Because one is in our sub box, right? And then we can have two here and then we add four in this case four is not at this row and not at this column and not at the cell box right so then there's the nest the nest uh empty is this one so in this case we add a three because three is not there here as well but then when i get to the nest element in this case uh it won't work right because in this case the nest element uh in this, in this case we have one two three four five six seven seven is already here eight in this case is also here nine is at the sub box so there's no option so we backtrack so we leave this empty so we unchoose a decision and then we make another decision right now we have seven so in this case we have three and then three when we get to here right in this case the only option that we can have right so we have one we have two we have three four, five, six, seven, we have eight. So eight is already at this column, so it's not gonna work. So we just keep backtracking. In this case, we traversing all the options. So you can see we try with seven, right? And then in this case, you can see we're going to choose another option. In this case, we have three. And then we it won't work. And then you can see we unchoose the decision, right? It's, it just keep going, right? But you can see that what I'm trying to say here is that um, well, if we keep going, you can see eventually we have to replace the this row, the, the, the previous row with some other data. So what I'm trying to say here is that you can, the reason why we use backtracking uh, to fill the table is that you can see if I want to find the correct value, right, the valid value, and you can see the valid value at the end is different. It's so different. It's like four, six, eight, nine, one, two, right? And then what we have here is like one, two, something. So, so basically, if I want to know the correct, the valid answer for the current row, I need to be able to do a DFS or do backtracking, uh, you know, to do a DFS to fill the values, fill the cells for the next row. And then 
once I fill the next row, I can be able to get the correct values for the current row because I have so many options, right? For the first row, I can have like something different. Um, and there's so many options that I can fill, so many different options that I can do for the first row, I can have a different values, right? So in this case, I need to find exact one solution that works for the remaining rows and then to get the correct answer for the current row, right? So now let's take a look at how we can do this in code. So in this case, uh, to do this in code, basically what I did here is I create a global variable called board and I put this as a global variable. And then what we basically start is at the uh, at the top right, uh, sorry, top left position, right? The zero, zero index position. And then once we do a DFS here, like notice that we're returning nothing, right? We're returning a void. So we're basically traversing starting from the first cell, right? And what we're doing here is that instead of like using a nested for loop, we're basically just going to do a DFS and do a row by row. And basically our, uh, our traversal looks like this, right? We're going from here all the way to here. Once we reach to the end, we're gonna start over from here and then start over from here. And this DFS branch is connected, right? So after we start over here, they're connected to here. After we go through here, it's also connected to here, right? And it's also connected to here, also connected to here and all the way to the bottom, right? And then these values are really heavily dependent. Uh, if there's anything that's wrong, if there's any cell that's incorrect, we have to go backtrack, right? And if this entire row was incorrect, we have to keep backtrack to the nest, the previous row and so on to, you know, get the correct value. So that's what I'm trying to say is that here you can see, um, I basically say that if the current column is out of bound, like if we keep going to the right, if it's out of bound, we're just going to reset. We're going to get a row is equal to row plus one, uh, row plus one, right? And the column is equal to zero. So we start over from the first element in the next row. And then what we do here is that if we notice that the current row is like after the last row, then we pretty much can return true because we finished the entire row, right? And notice that we're getting a board that's nine times nine, right, the size. And that's pretty much means that we're going from zero all the way to eight, index eight, right? So if it's out of bound, then we just return true for the row. Then if the current element is already filled, then we're just gonna return the we're going to do a DFS for the nest uh, iteration, right? For the nest cell. And then what we do is that if we found a position, then we're just going to do a DFS for all the valid options. And notice that we have a function called valid, check to see if the current position is valid or not. And just like the three constraints that we have, we check to see if this element exists or not in the entire column and the row and the current sub box, right? And then we pass in the current character. If the current character is exist, we're just going to continue to the next iteration. Otherwise, we're gonna fill this position uh, for this current element's value. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a DFS for the next element, right? So for the next cell, we're gonna do a DFS for the next cell. And if it's true, we're gonna return true, right? We, that means that we return back. We know that we successfully traverse the remaining cells that we have, right? So if we're here, if we're here, we do a DFS to the remaining cells and all the way to the bottom, return back to a valid answer. And then, you know, either true or false, right? So if it's true, we're gonna return true. Otherwise we're gonna uh, unchoose that decision that we made and then we, you know, iterate the remaining options. If we can't make a remaining, if we can't, if we don't have any choice that we can choose, we're just going to return false, right? So basically you can see here is valid function. I basically do a simple way. Uh, first, it's pretty easy. I want to see if this element exists in the current row or the current column. If it's not, we just continue. Otherwise return false. Then what we do here is I have a row border and a column border. You can do a different way, but this is just how I do it. Um, and basically what I do here is I try to find the start and the end of the, uh, the, the border, right? The current box. Uh, so if the coordinate, right? In this case, if the row is, let's say zero, if it, sorry, for example, if we were here, 
right? So I pass in the current coordinate. In this case, the current row is zero, uh, sorry, one. So I pass that in and it checks to see if it's less than three. If it's less than three, then the end, right? It's kind of like the merge interval question on the code. It's like you have a array, this is the start time, this is the end time. It's the same thing, this is the start border and this is the end border, right? I return that in a, uh, in a one directional array. And then I just uh, basically have the first element that starts, last element is the end. And that's also the same for the column as well, right? So at the end, what I do is I return false if I see that character. If I don't, I just return true. So you can do it this way, or what you can do is you can do it the other way, where you can use math. And basically, uh, you just try to, uh, let's say we're taking this cell as example, right? So in this case, six, right? So one, six. So uh, what I, no, this one. So what I do is if I have one, six, right? So I first divide this by three and this will basically give us, so the row box is now zero. And then the column box in this case is gonna be two, right? And then in this case, I is equal to row box time three. So I, so row box time three is basically three. And uh, we also have, oh, sorry, uh, row box is zero, zero times three is zero, sorry. And then I all the way to uh, row box plus one times three, which is basically three, right? So one times three is just three. So that's the row, right? And uh, so that's the row. And then the column in this case is basically uh, column divided by three. So that's going to be two, right? And then two times three is the starting. So in this case, it's going to be six, right? And then we also have uh, column plus one times three will give us, uh, in this case, so. Two, ti two plus one is three, three times three is nine. So we have basically this position. So from nine to six, uh, from six to nine and from zero to three. So that's like kind of like our border. You can do that, use that uh, using uh, math uh, to solve that. But uh, you can see that by all means, we still have to iterate each and every single position to find if this current element is equal to the current element or not, right? So you can either do it this way or you can do it my way, it doesn't really matter, right? So basically this is how we solve this problem.